what's going on youtube facebooks and all those that are able to watch me right now subscribers those uh those just viewing the video this is bill mack here once again with an edition of the middleman yes i am here folks with another top political uh story here is what has been making the news over the past day or two has been mr paul ryan yes you see him in the picture here uh, Mr. Paul Ryan, as you see, is holding up his copy of the American Health Care Act, and this was the House, uh, the, um, the Republicans, GOP's uh, version of the new uh, Health Care Act that they felt like replacing um, the current um, Obamacare with. Um, met an unlikely end, at least for the time being so far, dealing Mr. President Trump his first defeat. Uh, Paul Ryan was so sure that the, uh, the and when he made all these kinds of uh, uh, talks over different kinds of political programs and shows, even press conferences, that he was so confident that the uh, that the American Health Care Affordable uh, American Health Care Act will pass through. Uh, but the only problem was some of the Rep uh, Republicans had didn't even see the uh the act itself uh there was numerous times that uh sean hannity hosted uh, a panel of at least four different republicans to say hey we've never even seen it and they're wanting to pass something we've not even seen yet so we see a lot of and what's really has been a fight within the its own party the gop the republican party um uh, you've had a lot of uh going back and forth between the uh, the house freedom caucus and the house study committee uh, both, uh, you know, caucuses within the Republican Party um, with moderate, you have moderate and conservative uh, Republicans both going at it and both deciding, hey, we're not going to uh, vote for this. We don't agree with it. We're not going to vote for it. And that's what they've held tight. Now, we will see this. We're going, I'm going to give you an actual count here of the votes uh, and how they stand. There were actually 33 total um 33 total uh, votes that they needed to have because they fell short of their vote. So Trump went back. He said, okay, we're going to go and have a talk. We're going to delay the vote, and we're going to try to turn and win some of those over to from those no's to yeses so we can get this passed and we can get Obamacare uh, repealed and replaced. Um, well, they, they did. We had 15, basically. Um, they And you would think it would come from one particular group, but actually, like I said, from the uh, House uh, Freedom Caucus and the House Study Committee, both on opposite ends, your moderates and your conservatives. And it's kind of like back and forth where for they couldn't really compromise enough because when you're going one one way, you're taking away from the other. And when you're going the other way, you're taking from the other side, it's kind of like a pendulum when it's going back and forth. It's going one direction. It's not going any other. That's what happened here. You have 15 hardline conservatives now. They wanted a complete repeal of the Affordable uh, Care Act, which is uh, I, you known as Obamacare. They were all members of the House Freedom Caucus, you see, and they, they are the most right wing of really the right wing uh, and uh, conservative members of the House. Uh, Trump had actually met with them a few days because he knew he was going to try to sway them somehow. And some of the things we saw in which they were really hesitant about voting no for were three different things that were trying to go. But eventually, one thing that they did kind of get Trump to buckle in on was the uh, was that the weakened the requirement for um, the health insurers to carry what they call a basic set of coverage known as called essential health care benefits. And for those who don't know what they are, they're covered like this. Um, they are a set of benefits to people who bought their own insurance from the Affordable Health Care Act's individual markets when you call in, such as ambulatory patient services, you know, basically the outpatients you get without being admitted to the hospital. You got your emergency services, um, you know, basically along with that hospitalization, such as surgeries, overnight stays. Uh, another important was maternity leave, uh, like pregnancy and newborn care, uh, mental health, which is really near and dear to me, mental health and substance uh, usage disorder, um, such as getting behavioral treatment for those particular things, uh, prescription drugs, uh, rehabilitative, 
rehabilitative services, such as people that have like injuries, um, disabilities, or chronic um, conditions. Uh, laboratory services, preventative and wellness services, such as like getting shots, screen tests, you know, chronic disease management, and uh, basically pedi uh, pediatric services, such as you know, like oral and vision care, uh, you know, and, and which says that adult and men, uh, dental and vision wasn't included in this, just oral and vision. So they were wanting these to be cut basically or weakened down so that markets weren't taken. Why would you do that? Why would you want to reduce that? Now, here's what they're, what they're saying, and I'll get to this in a minute, what they are trying to say this would do. Trump is trying to build up $54 billion extra in military spending. So by essentially doing that, he's going to trim some budget off the, uh, um, some money off the deficit. All right. This is where we get to the other part here. This is what happens uh, when that happens. So we had 15 that were hard on. Okay. Next we see that 10, we have 10 of those that came from the moderates, which is the opposite side of that, which are basically the ones that, you know, that were in Republican districts that voted for Hillary, didn't want to vote for Trump. They're not siding with Trump. They don't want to go with Trump, but they actually voted for Hillary. That They kind of they kind of distances themselves away. They kind of got away from the bill because it, 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 after the Congressional Budget Office gave their analysis of what would happen, they said that it would leave at least 24 million people without health care insurance by this bill and by 2026 but it would and it would ref, you know it would shave um at least um 30 337 billion dollars um off of the uh, off of the budget so they're trying to trim it this way but by doing are you willing to trim up and trim down more money um are you willing to do that and trim and the money off the deficit, but you're giving up and weakening the basic coverages and things that healthcare provide to begin with, which is more important. That's where you draw the line, and that's where we're having these issues. At they they say like, oh wait a minute, we don't want to we don't want to have to deal with that because you're going to actually put more Americans without healthcare than you do when you have healthcare. Then what we got now with Obamacare, and so they decided to do it now. So um, the moderates wanted to have a higher Basically, they want to increase premium subsidies for low-income people and seniors. So on top of that, they just didn't want to have nothing to do with it. So you've got your, your extreme on the left uh, of the of the Republicans uh, that with the cons uh, moderates, and you got your extreme to the right, your conservatives both pulling apart basically with it. And then finally had eight Republican votes that were just of non attitude or was differences of little differences and things they didn't agree with it. You know, some of them said, one of them said that they had a concern about the changes to Medicaid expansion, which they were going to cut that out and, and for, uh, for grants for and try to find a work placement for Medicaid. They said anybody that's able bodied and uh, receives it, you know, should be, uh, should, should work, have work requirements. So, you know, how that works. And I mean, that's on a, a wide variety of things. That's why I said, I always, I don't like federal government getting in on that. If it's the state's requirement, let the states handle it and how they work it. But that's just, that's just how it goes when you have a federal government, a big government like that happening. So another one wanted a full repeal of it. And also a third said that he was worried at the bill's impact on um, o um, opioid um, abuse and um, and treatment of it. So we've seen so many different things. And what it's going to take folks is compromise. They're going to have to, uh, Trump said, uh, before they could even get a vote, they knew they weren't going to have a vote. Trump wasn't going to look defeated. So Trump told, uh, Ryan said, I suggest, President, we just pulled this uh, vote for now. So for now, Trump said, where well, we're going to let Obamacare. It's going to be here in the foreseeable future. It's going to explode. You're going to see us exploding. But Republicans are going to try to scramble together here because they've been saying for so long, we need to have somebody in here that we can get to push these bills. Now they have a Republican, supposedly Republican president. They can't get the bill pushed through. So is the Republicans to blame? Is it the president to blame? Is it these factions within the Republican Party are to blame for this? So we just continue seeing what's going on here. But for now, the president's going to move on to tax reform. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Uh, once again, subscribe to my channel. Like. Uh, like my video, share my video with others, subscribe to my channel, drop a like on this video, and until next time, 
uh, with uh, this is Bill Mack with the middleman. Take it easy. Yeah.